Today, we're going to install WSJTX, Grid Tracker, JS8 Call, and FL Digi. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Okay, a quick recap from last week. We installed Rig Control and we can see which version we have by running RIGCTL space hyphen hyphen version. And that tells us that we're running 4.4. Also, you can see right here in the background that we do have FL Rig running. So, let's go ahead and get to installing a few other things. So, I'm going to go ahead and open up the web browser and navigate over to the WSJTX download page. We'll go ahead and start scrolling down this page until we get to this section here that talks about Linux. Now, what we want to grab is this very first option right here for Debian Ubuntu 64-bit. So let's just go ahead and click on that and we'll give that a minute to download. Now, at first, you may think that uh, once you've downloaded that application, you can just go into the downloads directory, find WSJTX, and double click on it. So let's go ahead and try that, and let's see what we get here. And it's going to give us a dependency error. You can see that right here in red. So this is actually not going to install before we get that dependency installed. Let me show you guys uh, one way that you can get around that if you run into a situation like this without having to go chase down a bunch of different dependencies. I'm going to go ahead and open up the terminal and move to the downloads directory. We'll list that out and you'll find the WSJTX Debian file. So we're going to run sudo space dpkg space hyphen i space wsjtx underscore 2.5.4 underscore amd 64 deb. Boy, that's a mouthful. All right, let's go ahead and press return. We are going to get some more errors here, but we'll show you guys how to fix those in just a second. So as you can see, we did get several errors here. Let's see if we can get those fixed. Let's clear the screen and let's run sudo apt hyphen hyphen fix hyphen broken space install and go ahead and press return. Now it's going to ask you if you want to fix these dependencies. Go ahead and tell it yes and press return. Now, when I do this, I did see a couple of errors, and this brings up another good point. Before you start doing this, you should always run sudo space apt space update. This will make sure that you've got the latest repository index so that the system knows where to find each of the files. Now that we've done the apt update, let's go ahead and run that fix broken command again. This time, I didn't see those errors after running the sudo apt update. So now we can go ahead and try installing WSJTX again. So we're going to run that same command, sudo space dpackage space hyphen i space WSJTX, man, the rest of the file name. Once that finishes up, we can run where is WSJTX and we'll see that it's in the user bin directory. So it looks like it installed. Let's go ahead and press the Windows key on the keyboard and just start typing WSJTX. You'll see two results. That's the installation file that we just did, and here is the application. So let's go ahead and click on the application, and we'll take a quick second to go ahead and configure it. Inside of WSJTX, let's click on File and Settings. Let's go ahead and give it your call sign and your grid. Next, let's go over to the radio tab. And for the rig, we're going to choose FL rig, FL rig. Now, the reason I'm doing this is if I want to change radios, everything is pointing to FL rig. Each app we install is going to point to FL rig. So if I want to change radios, all I've got to do is set up the new radio inside of FL rig, and I don't have to redo that for every single application. Now for the 705 in particular, we want to tell it that the PTT method is cat. 
I'm going to tell it to use data packet mode and we're going to use fake it right here for the split operation. Let's go ahead and configure the audio tab real quick. We'll click the input button here. And for the 705, we're looking for this ALSA input, Burr Brown. We'll go ahead and click that one, and let's get the output file next. Scrolling to the very bottom, you'll see that uh, ALSA output, Burr Brown again. We'll choose it. Now, let's jump back over to the radio tab and hit the Test Cat button. If everything went according to plan, you'll see the frequency change right here. Now, it is red because I'm out outside of the regular WSJTX uh, frequency space. Next, we can go ahead and click the Test PTT button, watch your radio, and make sure that you're getting the expected result. Mine went into transmit mode, so we're good to go. Next, we're going to try to tackle Grid Tracker. So, we'll head over to gridtracker.org forward slash downloads. Let's go ahead and start scrolling down this page until we find the Linux section. Now, there's two different files that we need under Debian Ubuntu Mint. So, we'll just go ahead and click the NWJS downloader first. And once that finishes up, let's go ahead and click on Grid Tracker next to get both of those files downloaded. Once you have both of those applications downloaded, let's go ahead and open up our downloads directory in the file browser. And let's see how this goes this time. The first thing we want to do is grab uh, NWJS and get it installed. So we'll double click on that. And in this case, it doesn't look like we're missing any dependencies. So let's go ahead and click install the package. Give it your sudo password when asked and sit back and wait for it to install. Now, if you're curious about what's going on in the background, you can always click this Details button in Linux Mint, and it will show you exactly what's happening on the command line in the background. So right now, it's trying to download this application. Once NWJS installs, let's go ahead and close out of that. Next up, we're going to double-click on Grid Tracker. And next, we will click on Install the Package. Once again, we need to give it our sudo password and give it a few minutes to install. Once that finishes up, we can go ahead and close this window here. Let's press our window key and let's start typing Grid Tracker. And it looks like it installed correctly. Let's go ahead and click on that and we can see that Grid Tracker is installed. Now it is asking us to start WSJTX or to manually enter our grid square. We'll just say OK, just so we can verify that the application does open and run. And it looks like installing Grid Tracker was a success. So let's go ahead and get everything closed up so we can move on to the next application. We'll go ahead and head over to js8call.com. When we get to the main page, let's click on the downloads up in the top right and start scrolling down the page. We're looking again for the Linux files. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use this one here, the 20.04. So let's go ahead and click on that and give that a couple of minutes to download. Once that finishes up, we can minimize the browser again and go ahead and open our file browser. You'll see the JSA call is here. Let's go ahead and double click on this and see if we have the same issue that we had earlier with uh, WSJTX. Now, I am getting a warning here that says a later version is available in a software channel. I'm going to choose to ignore that warning for right now, simply because that may not always be the case, and I want to show you guys how to install it directly from the developer's website. Now, in the case of installing uh, JSA Call, it doesn't look like we're going to run into the same issues as WSJTX. However, if you've skipped straight to this portion of the video and this is not green, go back and watch the WSJTX install and see how we overcame this button being grayed out. For now, let's go ahead and click Install the Package. Once it finishes up, let's go ahead and open the menu system and type JS8 call. And you'll see that it's available right there as the first option. Let's go ahead and press return. And let's take just a minute or two to get this one configured as well. So I'm going to go ahead and give it my call sign and my grid. Then I'm going to jump over to the radio tab. Under rig, once again, we're going to scroll down until we find FL rig, FL rig. 
Specifically, again, for the 705, I'm going to choose cat control right here for the PTT method. Under mode, I'm going to use data and packet. And once again, I'm going to use fake it under split operation. Let's go ahead and head over to the audio tab. And it looks like it's actually pulled in the correct information. If it doesn't, you'll have to select your sound card for your specific setup. Let's jump back to the radio tab real quick and let's say test the cat. If everything went according to the plan, you will see the frequency that your radio is on right here. Go ahead and check the PTT next. My radio went into transmit, so we're good to go. Let's go ahead and close out of this. We've got one other application to get done. So the final application that we want to get installed is FL Digi. So we'll go ahead and head over to the FL Digi site, w1hkj.com. Let's go ahead and start scrolling down this page, and you're going to see a lot of different applications in the FL Digi suite. Today we're specifically going to be doing FL Digi. However, the same method that we'll use to build FL Digi can be used with each of these other applications. So I'm going to go ahead and click on FL Digi first. And on this next screen, I am looking for the tar.gz file. I see that right here. So I'll go ahead and click on this next. And we'll give that just a couple of seconds to download. Once the download is done, go ahead and open up your terminal and we will need to move into the downloads directory. So CD space tilde forward slash downloads. We'll do the ls command to list out the directory and you'll be able to see the fldigi.tar.gz file. So the first thing we need to do is extract that file. That is a compressed file similar to a zip file, so we need to uncompress it first. We're going to do that by running tar space hyphen zxvf and give it that file name. Once you've given it the full file name, go ahead and press return. Now that we've got it uncompressed, let's clear the screen, run the ls command again, and you'll see that we have a new FL Digi folder. We need to move into that folder with the cd command, and we'll give it FL Digi, and go ahead and press tab, and it'll auto-complete that line for us. Let's go ahead and press return, moving into the new FL Digi directory. The first command we need to run is dot forward slash configure space hyphen hyphen prefix equals forward slash USR forward slash local. We'll give it a space and we're going to say hyphen hyphen enable hyphen static. Go ahead and press return. And once that finishes up, you should see a screen that looks similar to this. Let's go ahead and clear that screen. The next command we're going to run is make. This is going to take a little while, so go ahead and press return and grab a cup of coffee. Now, it's a good time to mention if you did run into any errors during the make process, it might be because you didn't install FL Rig from the previous video. So go back and watch that section install uh, FL Rig and I can't remember the other one, uh, XML RPC, I believe. Uh, get both of those installed and then this should work fine for you. Once the make command finally finishes up, let's go ahead and clear the screen and let's run sudo make install. Give it your sudo password if asked. And next we can run sudo space ld config. Go ahead and press return and that should be the end of it. Let's go ahead and press the Windows key next on the keyboard and start typing FL Digi. You'll see that it is in our menu. Let's go ahead and click on that to open FL Digi. We do get the configuration wizard when we first open FL Digi. Let's see if I can remember enough about this application to actually get it configured for the 705. Let's click next. And I'm just going to give it a station call and the operator call. I'm not going to bother with the rest of this right now. Let's go ahead and click next. We do want to use port audio and then we'll go ahead and choose our sound card for the 705. In this case it's the USB audio codec and we'll use that for both choices here. The input or, or the capture and the playback is the way it's named in FL Digi. Let's go ahead and click next. 
And for rig control, we want to tell it enable FL rig as the control uh, with FL Digi as the client. Go ahead and click next. We can skip everything on the next screen. We don't want to use RigCat. And I don't think we want to use Hemlib in this particular case. And we'll just go ahead and say finish. Once the application opens up, make sure that this is following your radio when you make changes. And you can check your PTT by clicking the tune button and verifying your radio goes in to transmit. Mine does, so it looks like we're finished up here. Now, if everything works out, next week we will be taking a look at installing WinLink on the Evolve laptop and everything that that encompasses, Vara, RDOP, and Packet, along with Pat Menu. If you found this information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.